They say you should never meet your heroes, that they'll surely disappoint you. Honestly, I was a bit nervous with expectation when I realized I was going to meet one of mine in the flesh. There had been a few weeks of idle chit-chat, broken conversations, each of us taking turns with bad or non-existent cell reception. The night before, I had camped out at Abraham Lake testing a new portable wood barbecue I had found on Amazon. No plans were set in stone, but Foresty Forest was waiting for a weather window close to where I was hosting a van meetup the next day, so I'd be lying if I said I wasn't hopeful. Texts are often hard to translate. I had played the online dating game long enough to learn that you cannot really judge someone by how they come across over text. Not that I was planning on dating my hero, but you learn pretty quick that text conversations are easily misread, leaving me unsure if he had any interest in actually meeting up. That being said, I'm guessing most of his fans, male and female alike, would line up to go on a date with him, even if it was just because he owned his own crockpot. After leaving Abraham Lake, I headed south towards Banff on the Icefields Parkway to scope out the snowpack on my way through. What you'll see next is my first vlog ever. Please be nice, but also feel free to critique. I've always had a lively inner dialogue, so I'm looking for ways to let it out. And here we come into Banff National Park. You can see the uh, booth is closed here, which it often is, except during the summer. Makes this a great place to enter the mountains. So once you start into Banff National Park towards Lake Louise, you start climbing towards Bow Summit. It's a high, high pass, and it's a long uphill to get there. You can see the roads are becoming more and more snowy the plow truck I have passed going in the opposite direction. They have not plowed this side of the road yet. But uh, the roads really don't get much better than this unless there's a warm spell for a couple of days. You can see that the roads here have been very well maintained. That's one thing I do have to give the parks. They usually hit the really trouble spots first and then focus on the rest of the highways. So rest assured, you always have good roads to travel on. The scariest parts are usually the first parts they get to. Doesn't mean it's gonna be easy. Doesn't mean that it's always gonna be a wonderful, simple drive. Sometimes you have to slow right down to 20, 30 kilometers an hour and just crawl it out. But if you take your time, if you have good tires, if you have a good vehicle, I tell you, very little compares to taking a winter drive through here when there isn't loads and loads of tourists on these roads. And here we are. Bow Summit. Pato Lake is the stop so you know when you've arrived. It's been closed for a long time. I don't know why. I hope they open it soon, because it pushes a lot of traffic into the other places to see here. We are now at the highest point on this part of the parkway. It's all down a hill from here to Lake Louise. Now shortly after Pato Lake, you come to Bow Lake. That's Crowfoot Mountain you see there. And up in that valley to the right of Crowfoot is Bow Hut. An amazing stop. It takes a lot to get to it. If you want to find out more, uh, look to the video up in the top left, top right corner. You can see Mount Nicholas up in the distance there, that little arete. And 
the hut is almost directly below it. You can see it right now, but it's so small that without binoculars, it won't do you much good, I imagine. But it's a beautiful area. So here we are on the Trans-Canada Highway, passing Lake Louise right now. Headed towards Banff. Roads are in good shape. Seems like a good day to travel. So back to the part where I meet one of my heroes. Luckily, I was able to align schedules with Foresty Forest. He is every bit of the person you see in his videos, albeit a bit shorter than I expected. He has a dry sense of humor, the kind of dry humor you can only moisten with a baby wipe. And his van? That was way smaller than I expected. In hindsight, it might have been smart to record our meeting, but I also wanted it to be clear to him that I wanted to meet him because I wanted to meet him, not because I was seeking a boost or exposure. From his videos, I felt like he was the kind of guy I'd have a blast hanging out with, so I wanted it to be just that simple. While weather was not great, he wanted to take a second shot at Mount Bogart, so I was lucky enough to tag along. What blew me away was the amount of time he put into recording his journey. Take that camera away from him and he'd probably summit two or three mountains a day. When you watch one of his videos, you literally get to look through a window into his life. After spending the day with him, I started to feel that what he is in his videos is exactly the kid his mom watched grow up. It's like it's possible to climb up that, eh? Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing I love about most of the mountains though, like... There are no pretenses. There are no filters. What you see is truly what you get. When we finally gained the ridge line, the wind picked up tenfold. I should have known better than to think my microphone was going to work. I'm not one to hike with a hat or hood, but within a minute or two, an icy helmet began to form in my hair on the back of my head. It felt a bit like brain freeze, only without the tasty cup of diabetes. Once I put my shell on, Foresty Forest noticed that we almost looked like twins. At this point, it really didn't matter much anyways, as visibility was about 20 meters most of the time. Extra points for anyone who can tell us apart. So I just had to stop and show you guys this, but uh, look who's out there. They're everywhere. I'm just gonna wheel past them one more time. Just so you can see, there's probably about 15 of them here. Oh, nothing doing. Just hanging out chewing on the grass. Welcome to Canada. <laughs> <laughs>